All right, everyone, we're going to get started. Again, this is John Paul here at POS Portal. Thank you again for joining us for today's presentation. So really what our goals are for today, just to kind of give a quick outline of what we want to accomplish. Uh, we're going to talk about who you are, so look at the attendees on the call today, kind of give an idea of, of who they um, you know, are essentially, what kind of companies are involved. Uh, who we are, so a bit of background about POS Portal as an organization. We'll then talk about the dream team, uh, so what exactly we have done on top of this salesforce.com platform, uh, what the relationship is between POS Portal and salesforce.com. Uh, really our focus though when we look about or uh, look at the, the technology of the solution P2, we're going to be discussing five things, so we'll talk about what those are. We'll also share some possible outcomes. So for a lot of organizations, you know, looking to see, well, okay, in enabling or, or implementing this type of technology, uh, what's realistically an outcome that you know my organization can walk away with. We'll talk about some of those. And then really the meat of today is going to be probably focused on or will be focused on the, the P2 demonstration itself. So we'll be spending some time uh, easily a good 40 or so minutes within the P2 solution and walking through that, again, with the, the focus on those five items that we outlined earlier. And then we'll leave some time at the end for any questions as they come up. So who you are, uh, we have about 20 people that registered for this event. This is actually the second of uh, two events that we've had today. We had one this morning at 8 a.m. Uh, our time here in California. I had about 30 people on that event. Um, but really, you know, this, this is who's on the event today, who registered at least. And you know the orange designates those that are current P2 customers. So uh, for those, Kayla, Renee, Coy, Ashley, Wayne, and John, we welcome you to the event. Everyone else, we also, you know, again, thank you for joining us. Um, but really, this group represents um, some processors. There's quite a few ISOs in this list, as well as a few uh, agent offices as well. So again, for everyone online today, thank you for joining us. A little bit of background about POS Portal, who we are. So that's myself on the left. Uh, my name is John Paul, like we mentioned earlier. Uh, POS Portal, we've been around since 2000, so the last 13, 14 years roughly. Uh, again, we're, we're not an ISO, we're not a processor. We take a very agnostic approach in the industry. Uh, we have other lines of business involved with uh, equipment sales or bulk equipment sales, uh, deployment services, so handling the, the deployment for some clients. Uh, recently, we moved into the tablet POS space, so uh, providing the hardware behind those tablet POS solutions. From a software perspective, uh, what we'll talk about in a second here is that there is an earlier version of a Salesforce automation or CRM solution that we developed for the industry. We refer to that as P1. We'll talk about that, a little bit more of the history there in a second. Uh, P2 is obviously the focus today and what we'll talk more about in a second. And roughly across our three locations, one in Louisville, Kentucky, and two in uh, Sacramento, we have about 150 full-time employees. Um, specific to P2 real quick, we have about 130 active customers with roughly 85, 80% uh, of them being ISO offices. So really the focus for the event today, we want to talk a lot about the platform. So for us, uh, we get a lot of questions that, that you know, in many cases, um, you know, look like this. So, you know, what is Salesforce.com? Why would POS Portal go about building on that Salesforce.com platform? And I think more specific to that, you know, how does that help me or how does that help you as uh, a merchant acquirer out there in the industry? Why is that valuable? So really just to kind of give some background, you know, Salesforce.com is a global cloud computing company. They're headquartered in San Francisco, so not too far from our headquarters in Sacramento. You know, they're really best known for their CRM or their customer relationship management product. And while they recently launched a new platform, they call it Salesforce One, they're really now focused today on enabling this, quote, internet of customers. They feel very strongly that behind every device is a customer, and as you would expect, due to working with companies of all sizes and in all industries, they do have the largest market share in the CRM software space. So a bit of background about POS Portal and how we sort of paired up with them. Uh, in early 2000s, we had introduced both the first on-demand CRM and sales automation solutions that were tailored to the merchant acquiring industry. While we actually continued on that path for a few years, bringing on clients and you know all different sizes and delivering very custom solutions for them, we did make a strategic pivot in 2009. So Salesforce.com had just opened up their Force.com platform. So again, Force.com platform to ISVs or independent software vendors to go about building specific solutions and allow those companies to go to market with them. And for us, that was actually really beneficial because it would allow us to more quickly position a solution for our clients yet still deliver the valuable industry-specific functionality, functionality that they were looking for. 
And with that said, as, as some of you on the call might know, we officially launched P2 in 2011. And again, our clients that range from large processors and acquirers to smaller agent offices, they each have their own unique experience on this platform. Uh, real quick, I mean, compared to non-industry specific solutions or those on closed platforms, P2 provides these clients a much quicker path to having a central platform stood up for their specific business and the unique way that they operate. And really because we're the company handling both the implementation and the configuration of P2, along with all training and future support, we also serve the role of a consultant or a value-added reseller, if you want to call it that, that many clients would otherwise have to rely on and seek out. So just to kind of sum up that point, you know, we've not only created the P2 product, but we're also the company working with you directly to implement it around your specific business requirements, which for a lot of customers is really a gap that is going to be existing or exist um, if, if those companies head down, you know, different paths. And really, as you'll notice today, as I jump to the next slide and, and we get into the demonstration, you know, our clients are also empowered to make any tweaks, customizations, or even to build on this platform themselves to get even more value out of it while at the same time they're still able to come back to us uh, you know, for additional assistance as well. So our focus today, uh, just going to talk real quick on the slide, is really these five key items. So we're going to look at P2 in a second, and we're going to be focused on lead routing management, how that's tackled and achieved, sales automation, so we'll talk about what that looks like, application processing, so all of the, the back office uh, shuffle of documents and relevant applications for a specific product or service you're selling. We'll talk about that. And then we'll round up today looking at customer service and some tools that we've enabled for a lot of our clients to assist with that piece. And then again, finalize or talk finally about reporting and you know what's possible being on this platform. So real quick before we dive into the solution, you know, we talked about earlier uh, in the call as we outlined this some possible outcomes and you know, for a lot of our clients, when they're looking to go and, and you know, achieve top-line growth or drive revenue, uh, really there's a lot of, uh, I would say these five areas are probably key to how they're, they're directly doing that. Um, so just some quick examples on some of these points. So lead generation, you know, there's paths within a CRM solution or a solution like P2 to not only increase both the quality but also the quantity of qualified leads. You can increase the flow of leads to your sales force for follow-up. Uh, maybe you're able to determine which marketing campaigns produce the best results. So that's lead generation. Lead conversion related, uh, improving the conversion of a lead to a more qualified sales opportunity. Maybe identifying key talking points of interest and tracking these conversations with the merchant for later use and analysis. Uh, a lot of companies today are, are looking towards marketing automation, so possibly nurturing the lead through a, you know, a drip marketing campaign, ideally one that is automated and focused on their specific interests. Selling velocity related, you know, decreasing the sales cycle time, extremely important for a lot of ISOs out there reducing any administrative tasks and increasing time for relationship building, and really decreasing the ramp up time for new salespeople. So, you know, we know there's a lot of turnover in this industry. Uh, a lot of sales reps are coming and going. So if you can go out to market, bring on a new sales rep, and decrease the ramp up time for them to get going, that's extremely valuable. Customer retention, uh, increasing the quality of the knowledge about a customer and what their business drivers are. You know, staying, quote, top of mind with prospects and customers with topics or items that are interest, uh, interesting to them. And then really, for a lot of customers, I think they, they might initially make contact with one person uh, at a merchant location, but, you know, really expanding the depth of your contact relationships with each customer's business, uh, again, to kind of branch out is always valuable, too. And finally, customer service, uh, just, again, some high-level items here. So, you know, staying informed of top customer service issues and decreasing any service-related costs. Identifying trends that are opportunities for service improvements and possible product enhancements, since a lot of you guys sell multiple products. Enhanced employee engagement with tools and resources to produce a memorable customer experience. So again, enabling your team with the right tools to make the process easier for them. And then finally, from a sales rep and management perspective, um, you know, updating those folks if there are any contact issues so they're kept informed. So these are just all some possible outcomes that can be achieved through a solution like this. So with that said, and, and really just real quick before I go any further, if you do have any questions, please type them into the chat box or question box as we go through today. Uh, we'll have some time at the end to tackle all of those. So just a little bit of housekeeping there halfway through the call. All right, so for those familiar with P2 or Salesforce.com, I know we have a few clients on the line today. Um, this is a solution. So again, if you're familiar with Salesforce.com, a lot of this uh, should look somewhat familiar at least. 
But this is what we've done and built out. So today we're going to be sort of showing a lot from the role of uh, Mr. Santa Claus here. He's going to be our portal administrator. So a lot of traditional CRM uh, functionality here. You know, there's calendars and you could have tasks created and, um, you know, there's some dashboards or reports, which we'll talk about more later, that can be displayed for that person on their home page. But one thing that we've done, um, you know, specifically to make the process and the experience a lot more intuitive for folks is we built out what we call this P2 inbox. And this is a custom object or an item that we've created in this environment specific to P2 to allow our customers to more quickly navigate and get to, you know, again, key items of interest. So they can see all their merchant records and how they break down by different statuses, such as leads and active opportunities, active merchants. They can also see all their deals, which are going to be the, the sales opportunities that your team is involved with, and we'll talk more about that in a second. So how those break down around their active deals, deals that are currently unclaimed, which may have been submitted to their back office and then those that might be pended. So maybe there was, a, again, avoided check missing as a, a simple example there. So we can see all those. Tickets, so customer service related tickets, um, you're able to open those on behalf of merchants, um, and those can be created and managed in the system. So we'll talk about that today and show that. And then finally, there's ways to sort of index and manage um, from an administrative perspective or a company perspective, you know, what agent relationships you have, what partner relationships you have. Um, so all that information could also be dealt with and addressed here within P2. So again, while there's a lot more that we're likely not going to be discussing today, um, you know, we're definitely happy to explore other items in the future um, related to this. I think that the key takeaway before we get going here is the fact that this is a solution that you, know, you guys would, would own. So all the information that's flowing through it, all the data, um, you know, anything that your sales reps are involved with, again, that's something that you from a company, you're going to own all that information and have a record of it going forward. So, you know, you're not at the mercy of information being in the back of a sales rep's car and a, you know, um, yeah, I mean, you, you kind of get the idea there. So, so with that said, we're going to start talking about uh, lead management and lead distribution, kind of what that looks like as one, you know, one of the first five things we're going to discuss today. So on that note, there's really a lot of ways that lead records can be created here within P2. So just some quick examples, you know, sales reps and folks on your team are able to import a list of prospects. So maybe if you go to a trade show or a conference, you can import that. You know, there's a real simple path to go about just creating records from an ad hoc sort of fashion. So just going in and creating a single record. Some customers will have like a contact us form or a contact form on their website. And maybe the output of that is creating a new record here in P2. Um, and again, there's probably a lot of other methods that, that I'm, you know, I could describe here, but what we're going to show today is an example involving a referral partner. So for a lot of ISOs and, and processors out there, larger requirers, they have a lot of um, you know, partners, associations, folks out there that have value, not only providing a leader referral uh, directly to your team, but at the same time having the, the transparency and the visibility to go back and uh, see exactly where that leader referral is at. So to do that, I'm going to be showing an example today of a woman named Cindy Gray. And Cindy Gray is a referral partner here in P2, and she is actually with the Alameda County Chamber of Commerce. So again, this is a partner out there in the world. Again, she's logging directly into P2. And the first thing you'll notice is that really the experience is going to look a little bit different. You know, the tabs on top are different. The inbox here on the left-hand side looks different. Again, she's only ever seeing uh, information that she submitted or you know, records that she's technically the owner of. But really, the first thing we're going to notice is that there's this new referral form that we presented to Cindy Gray. So in this case today, we're going to be using an example of a merchant called a Slice of Life Pizza. And there's a contact there named Bill Johnson. So Cindy will enter in all this information. 123 Main Street, we'll enter in Bill's phone number, and we're here in Sacramento, so we'll just use Sacramento, our zip code. So again, a really simple experience for the partner. This is all very intuitive to figure out. And there's also a path for the partner to attach any relevant documents. So Here's an example. Maybe we already have a statement. Maybe we already have a business license. So any other relevant documentation that the partner would want to submit onto your team to maybe assist uh, you know, the folks on your end in selling to this merchant, again, there, there's a path there to, again, submit those documents to. So Cindy will hit Submit New Merchant. 
And what that's going to do is create a new lead record within P2. So it says that the merchant has been added successfully. And while this is now four, if we actually click into it, it'll update to five. And for Cindy, she can now see that a slice of life pizza, the record's been created. Let's just click into it to show what that looks like. So all the information here has been entered in. All the attachments are listed. I mean, any of these we could click into. Just real quick to give you an example. And it could either be displayed on the bottom, or we can open it in a new window, and it'll pop it up sort of full screen. But going back, a couple things that have occurred is, first off, we have a record um, that's been created. We know who the referral partner is. We know who the contact is. But at the same time, we had a rule within P2 set up that any leads that have been referred from Cindy Gray, they've automatically been assigned to a specific agent. So Ben Davis is one of our, our W2, our salaried sales reps. And any leads that come in from Alameda County Chamber of Commerce are automatically routed to Ben. So Ben uh, is now going to be the sales rep that's working with this merchant. So from a referral partner perspective, real quick, just to round up the, the thought here, um, again, Cindy has full visibility into all of the previously submitted leads and referrals that she sent onto your team. If you notice here, that's 93, and she can see exactly where they're all at in different statuses. Any one of these she can click into. You know, if there is, let's say, an active merchant out there, and again, see more visibility. But you know, she can't delete anything. She can simply just add or create new contacts, edit contact information, you know, add attachments, add notes. So it's still limited um, compared to what your own team can do internally, your, your direct employees. But there's definitely value in the approach. And then finally, real quick, there's some, uh, again, limited sort of reports and dashboards that Cindy would be uh, available or would be available for Cindy to access so she can interact with these in different documents. So we're going to log out from Cindy's perspective. And let's come back to the home screen and sort of show the example of, of where that lead ended up and you know, what the experience is now in P2. And just real quick, some of the assumptions we're going to make today are that we're doing all this from the portal admin, but again, Ben Davis, the sales rep, could be logging in or somebody else could be logging in and, and going through this process as well. So we're going to click into leads, and right off the bat, we're going to see that a slice of life pizza has been you know, created. Um, there's a created date column that we're currently filtering again, so that's why it shows up right on the top. But you know, for me, as let's say the sales manager or somebody here in P2, I can come into that record. And there's really a lot more information that is then exposed to that particular member of your team. So a lot more sections, and the page layout itself looks a lot more um, you know, built out, I would say. But again, this is still an initial lead record. Um, you know, the immediate goal for our team would be to now assign this to a sales rep. So even though I mentioned that Ben Davis is a sales agent, we still want to change the ownership. So what that looks like. And this could be done in more of a, a, a bulk fashion, which we'll show in a second. But in many cases, it's someone on your team clicking the Assign Merchant to Agent button that we've built into P2. And you could you know, pick out your sales agent. We already know it's going to be Ben Davis. Uh, they can you know, send out an email notification, a text message notification. Uh, in this case, we're going to send Ben simply an email. And he'll have a link in that email to which he can click and get right to this record. But we can also set appointments on his calendar where that makes sense. So when he logs into P2, he sees the appointment with this merchant. And here's what we'll actually do. We're going to use this right now or show this process in a second. But um, you can actually drive the, the product selection or what's going to be the deal record um, from this interface as well. So let's say that we know the referral from Cindy. They're interested in merchant processing. So we'll actually set that right now and select that. And once we hit Save, we'll come back to the record for this, this particular lead of this merchant. And really, two things have changed um, that are important today, or really three, I should say. So first off, it's now moved from the lead status to an active opportunity because we created that deal or that product um, opportunity record, which we'll show in a second. We now have Ben Davis as the account owner, which is good because that's going to give visibility to Ben to this record. And at the same time, we've now created a deal uh, record essentially for this product merchant processing. So you know what, what this deal record is, is a way for uh, acquirers, ISOs, folks that are out there selling multiple products, uh, even agent offices, to independently track the different products and services that they're selling to, a same, uh, to the same merchant. So you imagine, you, you know, imagine having the, the merchant processing product here, and the status might be closed, and maybe six months go by, 
and you guys go back to that same merchant and you're now going to create a product for, I don't know, it could be cash advance or loyalty gift card, whatever other product or service. I mean, the path to do that is very straightforward. You just come in and click the new deal and really what that's going to allow you to do is have your own unique set of stages. So the stages here down below, um, these are not only something that is, is customized to your process today and, and you know, what your requirements are uh, within P2, the different steps that you follow, but these stages here, these sales and application stages, these are also going to be unique to the product that you've selected. So if let's say we were selling, I don't know, um, a gateway or cash advance or whatever other products out there that you guys go to market with, again, that could have a, an entirely different set of stages down below. And really what these stages allow for is not only uh, you know, very valuable reporting, which we'll show in a second, but they also assist your sales team in, in really what the process is going to be. So imagine if you brought a new uh, sales rep you know, into your organization and you had five products that you go to market with. Well, you know, through an approach like this, they can see exactly what steps or stages they need to follow to go about selling that product to that merchant. So really helpful stuff there. So continuing on with just this, this deal object, again, we know that it's for a slice of life pizza as a merchant. We know what the product is. We just told you that, or we just talked about that being merchant processing. So for someone like Ben Davis as a sales agent, who's now going to go about the process, and again, let's make some assumptions here that he's already made contact with the merchant and he's now, again, begun this sales process. He can start using some of these fields in here to help out with forecasting and reporting. So you know, maybe he expects the deal to close with this merchant by the end of the month and that the forecasted monthly revenue is going to be at least $75, so we could save that. But really, you know, how these stages are used is, is you know, as you would imagine, you're just coming through and, and that sales rep's going to be clicking into each and every stage, and the time, the date, and who the person was that advanced to that stage will be logged here on the record going forward. Um, let's just jump forward to the application stage. So again, a couple of assumptions that have been made here, but really at a high level, your team would be able to run some reports that say, okay, I want to see all the deals that are out there in my pipeline for, let's just say, all of our products or just merchant processing or whatever it might be with, uh, I don't know, a forecasted close date of the end of the month or the end of the year with a forecasted monthly revenue over $50 and all of those that are currently in the application stage. So you guys can get very granular with what uh, what opportunities are out there and what do we now have to do to get these from the application stage to the QA stage or from proposal to application? You know, what additional resources do we need to allocate for that? So a lot of value in that approach and being able to, you know, really granularly narrow that down, uh, you know, for a lot of our customers that we work with today. So from Ben's perspective, you know, we're now here on the deal, we're managing the process, we're advancing the different stages. Um, so when it comes to the application stage itself, you know, a lot of our clients have different methods with which they're collecting documents and, you know, other ancillary materials to, you know, attach to this record or bring it back to this record. Um, so for those of you that are out there today and maybe you're still dealing with, with paper documents or items that are faxed in, uh, there's definitely going to be a path for you to go about scanning those documents and then you can simply come in and upload that electronic document uh, in here and you could, you know, put the name on it and description. Um, you might also be dealing with a lot of documents today that are born electronically, so you might have PDF or Word documents where that makes sense, and again, the path there is probably a little bit easier, but you would still come in here and upload all those, those different documents, so at least there's a, a centralized repository uh, for that merchant of all these, these relevant um, you know, attachments that relate back to them. For some of our clients, though, what we've done is we've kind of taken this a step further, and I'll, I'll show it in a second, this new online application. But um, before I do that, just real quick, just to round out the thought here before I move on, uh, again, a lot of just traditional CRM functionality, you know, you can send emails from here, you can create notes, you can create tasks, log a call, et cetera. So a lot of that's uh, definitely there still. We haven't removed any of that. But the point I was going to make related to the new online application or, you know, initiating this button is that for a lot of our clients, we're also adding additional value. And this is an additional project, so there are additional costs involved. But we're able to take their merchant processing application, whether it's a single app or multiple apps, and really build it here into P2 or into the CRM solution. So we noticed here we just have an example with the first data app. And right off the bat, you can see that some of the data that we've already collected, or really all of the data, I should say, that we've already collected in this example, um, has been auto-filled or auto-populated here in these respective fields. 
So again, this information originally came in from Cindy Gray, the referral partner. So I really haven't, as a sales rep, keyed in any additional info, but imagine where I had, and you know, I already had, I don't know, 50% or 75% of the uh, application-related fields filled in, let's say, where that made sense on the CRM record, then you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of time that I can save as a sales rep and a lot of redundancy from a data entry standpoint that's going to be removed by having an approach like this. So again, there was information auto-filled. Um, from your perspective as the acquirer of the ISO, uh, you know, working directly with us in, in P2, you guys have complete control over what fields are, um, you know, needing to be required to be filled in before your, your sales rep generates the PDF. Um, there's a lot of standardization that you can apply to this process. And another example here might relate to having certain fee items hard-coded. So maybe your ACH reject fee has a really simple example today is always $25, so you can have that hard-coded here, um, or really any of these, these items kind of hard-coded for your sales reps who maybe, maybe you don't want to give them direct control over being able to manipulate those numbers. But really this experience is, is very seamless, uh, renders really well on a tablet, um, you know, an iPad or some other Android-based tablet that your, your reps might have out in the field. A lot of our customers will use this out in the field, so they'll be, again, on the 3G or 4G enabled device, and they'll be inside of P2, and They'll pull up the application this way, collaborate face-to-face -face with the merchant, and once they get all this information populated and filled in, you know, the path for them is then to save it and generate the PDF. And when they actually generate the PDF, what that's going to do is really just take all the data as it's been entered onto the application here, this online application, and output it to their respective PDF. So part of the project for us at POS Portal is not only you know, building all of your unique fields and requirements into the application that exist within the CRM, but at the same time mapping the output of that to that PDF that you guys use today. So at the end of the process, you end up with, you know, your exact PDF that you use today. Everything's clean, machine-type text, um, so, you know, nothing handwritten. Again, you guys own all the data, so it's within your own company's, um, you know, uh, control, essentially. It's not, you know, information in the back of one of your sales reps' card or, or just in their own mind, if you will. Um, so what we've done here, and again, we're making a few assumptions just in the interest of time, but from Ben Davis's perspective, we've dealt with the application. Let's also make some assumptions that we've already collected, you know, all the other relevant documents uh, for this deal to be submitted to our back office, so we have a voided check and everything else. Um, in this example, though, the one last thing that we need to figure out is the online, or the, I should say the e-signature, the electronic signature. So while we've worked with a lot of e-signature providers out there, us at POS Portal, um, you know, and clients come to us with, with different solutions all the time, two of the more common would definitely be EchoSign or DocuSign. So these are two of the more well-known solutions in the industry. We're going to show an example today with DocuSign. Um, and the caveat here is that you want to ensure that, you know, your processor, your ISO, whoever you're working with today to send your deals ultimately to, that they allow for e-signatures to be on the app. But as long as that's not a concern, then from a technology perspective, there is a very clean and clear path to enable that here within P2. So um, what we're going to actually look at today is not the, the send with templates approach, which for those that aren't familiar with DocuSign or EchoSign, a lot of these solutions, uh, from, I should say most of them, typically rely on the, the, the document that needs to be signed being sent out via email. And then they have a concept called a template, and really what a template is, is just a way of mapping out on that document or that packet, um, you know, assuming that it is multiple pages, where exactly a signature needs to be collected. So in other words, it might say, you know, for the, this SD application template that on the bottom left-hand corner of page three, we need a signature there, and then we also need it in the top right-hand corner of page five. Um, so you can not only send out multiple, or create, I should say, multiple templates, but you could also send out multiple documents at the same time to that merchant for signature uh, using an approach like this. So again, that, that's sort of the, the standard approach. So it, it's someone on your team, you know, initiating the send with templates button. I would imagine, you know, well, I should say, if you are selling over the phone, or really, you know, kind of in a remote fashion, then this uh, uh, this method would make sense. But again, going back to the example where you have a sales rep out in the field and they're selling face to face with a the merchant, they have a tablet, they've collaborated with them, um, you know, on the online application within P2. It really didn't make sense to have to email that out to them. So one thing that we've enabled, or one signing ceremony we've enabled, is what we call sign now. And what this does 
to bring it up real quick, is it's actually going to launch the application itself. So again, imagine your sales reps with the merchant, he hands over his tablet, the merchant's able to click the review document button, review the app itself, ensure that everything's been entered in correctly, and ultimately once that merchant, um, again, or even the sales rep hits next, it's going to take him directly to the area on that document that needs to be signed. Once they hit sign now, um, even though I've done this previously, uh, you're going to get a box that pops up that says, please type in your name, or they can also draw their name in, so they could use their finger on the device, the tablet. I just kept it simple uh, in this example. So again, the signature would be applied here. And once we close this and we hit confirm signing, Again, with our example, it's just a single signature block. But once we hit confirm signing, it'll take us back to the deal record. So really from Ben Davis's perspective, he's now, again, making some assumptions, done everything that he needs to. He's interacted with the merchant. He's got all the information he needs. He has all the documents that he needs. They've all been signed. And let's just make some assumptions that all those documents are listed out here. So from Ben's perspective, the final step is to now submit this to our back office. So we want to get the deal, um, you know, the, the process around it being reviewed started. So really the last step here is for Ben to initiate this QA stage. And again, a lot of customers that we work with might call that a junior underwriter, an app scrubber, um, a validation person, quality assurance, you know, whatever you call it, this person in our example is someone that would be initially just looking over all the documents, ensuring that everything's been signed appropriately. Um, before it's ultimately passed on to somebody else who might be a, a more traditional underwriter. So again, this is a simple screen that we've enabled for some clients where you can have you know, a list of product requirements pop up and you know, all the attachments would be populated and your sales rep can also pass a note to your back office as well. But really for, for someone like Ben, that's the last step in the process. So it's kind of out of his hands right now. It, it's now into our back office. And where this Excuse me, where this actually ends up is in this unclaimed deal queue on the left-hand side. So if you were watching that, it went from seven to eight now. And if we actually notice here, uh, a slice of life pizza is now showing up as one of these unclaimed deals. Um, and this is something that, you know, these, these queues, I mean, there's appended queues. So, you know, if there were things missing, um, documents, which we can show in a second, but we probably won't have time for today, they would end up here as well, those, those applications or those deals. But you know, here's going to be an unclaimed deals queue. So these are all the recently submitted deals. Uh, you can see who the merchant is, what the product is, what the status and stage is. But really, you know, the goal of, of an approach like this is that someone on your team would ultimately come in. They would say, okay, we have a new merchant, a slice of life pizza. Um, they're immediately going to want to claim the deal. And what that's going to do for this back office person, you know, we're going to drop Santa's uh, face in here because he's our, our example today. But it's going to start uh, not only tracking the business hours, so you guys are able to see exactly how long these apps are taking to move through your back office from you know, someone initially claiming them to, let's say, the deal being marked as complete. Um, but at the same time, we've now unlocked, uh, where these were gray before, we've now unlocked the ability to move the deal through the process because we now have a back office person working it. So again, while we don't have time today to discuss it, uh, you know, for a lot of our clients, we're, we're also assisting with underwriting uh, steps and, and ways to automate that process. There's some ideas we can share there. Some clients boarding, so if they are you know, boarding or dealing with a lot of apps every month, there's a way to automate that process as well. Uh, so again, we can talk more about those um, you know, specifics on a future call. Both of those items, though, are definitely unique to the, the company that we're working with, just because, again, you have your own unique relationships and steps that you follow. Um, so thus far, we've talked about, you know, we, we ripped through it really quickly here, but we've discussed uh, really what the process is for a you know, someone like Cindy Gray, a referral partner that you may be working with to interact with P2, submit a lead of referral, how that would be uh, not only received by your team, uh, but ultimately managed, distributed out to a sales rep. The sales rep would make contact. Uh, they would initiate the process of automating the, the sales process, creating this deal record, essentially. And then the deal record also includes the ability to, you know, assist with the application processing piece and how that's being pushed through your back office for review and then ultimately final closure um, and that could then, you know, lead to, um, you know, the, the, the terminals being deployed or, or the setup being initiated or, you know, a terminal ID, merchant ID making its way back to this record um, for the purpose of just logging all that. So I think what we want to round up with today on this call is, is two final items. And those two, like we talked about earlier um, in the deck we looked at, are going to be related to, uh, related to customer service and then a reporting quick look. So. 
Let's dive into that. So from a customer service perspective, uh, you know, let's just say or use the example where uh, maybe someone named John Smith out there, one of your merchants, let's say he's with a company called 14 Below, and he reaches out to your team over the phone. You know, you, I'd imagine you have some dedicated uh, help desk folks or customer support agents, and he reaches out to them and says, hey, um, I don't know, maybe he talks to, to Susie. Susie, I have an issue with my statement. Can you help me out with that? So what that person on your team, what the experience or the process typically would look like, if they would come into P2 or they'd already be in P2, they would then do a quick search for that merchant, immediately pull up any records that relate to them outside of just the, the name of the account. But really then they're on that merchant's record. So here's 14 below. This is an example or I would say a better example of a merchant or an active merchant where there's a lot of information that we've collected. So we have a merchant ID, the EIN. We can see all the people that have been involved in this deal, address information. SIC code, number of locations. Um, there's a few other sections down here, but you know we can see the notes and who the contacts are, and again, what products we've sold to them. So again, going back to the point about multiple products being sold to that same merchant, activity history, um, you know, any attachments. So we can see a P&L, a pay stub, a balance sheet, whatever made sense. All the tickets. And if we go down to the very bottom, we can also see like deployment orders. So there's a path to handle your deployment needs from within P2. And really, we're, in a lot of cases, it's going to make sense from a customer service perspective. You can see their terminals that have been deployed. So you can have the terminal ID listed here, the serial number, when it was installed, et cetera. And without having to scroll down through that long, long list, there's also a really quick, simple path just to navigate or hover over these uh, different sections here. So if we want to see, like as an example, what products or services did we sell to that merchant recently when they call in? OK, well, we can quickly see the five here. or um, you know, what were the recent tickets that have been created or submitted and how did we resolve those issues last time or, um, you know, when was the last time a ticket was actually created? When was the last time we reached out to them? Again, what terminals do they have? So hopefully you get the idea that all that information can be accessed quickly. But from a customer service perspective, uh, again, there's still going to be value. Even if you're able to resolve that issue right then and there on the call, uh, in many cases you're still going to want to create a ticket, which is going to give you the ability to log that that record going forward and just ensure that you have uh, you know, this database or this, this record of that merchant reaching out to you and maybe you know, three weeks ago when that happened last, you were able to identify exactly how that was resolved and you know, this time around resolve that issue a lot quicker. So we have just created a new ticket and our new support ticket. And in many cases you might not just be having uh, tickets uh, being requested by the merchant directly. They may be coming from an agent or a referral partner like Cindy Gray or your own staff. So you can also have that selected. We know who the merchant is in this case because we initiated this from the record. When it comes to the reason, this is something that your team will have uh, the ability and control over customizing. So here's just some quick examples that we have in this, this demo environment. But again, we, we mentioned that there was a statement or a billing related question. So we'll select that. Uh, maybe the severity isn't necessarily critical. Maybe it's not low either. We'll just say it's medium. And we can just put some notes in here. John Smith had a question about the statement. We'll keep it simple. You can add any other relevant details that make sense. And then finally on this screen, you can also set the origin or the source of uh, you know, the ticket uh, and how they reached out to you. So you know, did they call into your team? Did they come in via your website, via email? I don't know how relevant facts is today, but you know, again, that could be another method where that made sense. So ultimately, you'll just click the uh, relevant or the, the origin itself, and then once we hit save, the final screen or the final interface is, is really going to be something that looks like this. So a couple things are going on here. So first off, the the ticket itself has been created. Uh, it's actually now going to be in the submitted queue. So if I actually clicked into this, you would see this new ticket that's been uh, submitted. Um, at the same time, it hasn't yet been claimed, so there's no one yet officially working this ticket. Um, so that's something you're going to want to do. But there's also the ability to assign this ticket. So if, let's say, the person on your team receiving the call, they're you know, one of three people on your customer service team, and maybe John Smith, who called in two weeks ago, he spoke with Amy um, and, and not you know, Susie or Philip, let's just say. So maybe it made sense for Susie to actually assign or sort of override this and assign it to Amy as an example because Amy was the one that last helped out John. So you can do things like that, but you can also come in and, as you would imagine, claim 
the, the ticket itself. And a couple things that's going to start doing. Number one, we're once again going to be start um, or start the process of tracking the cycle time and how quickly this ticket's being sort of pushed through the process from submitted to closed. So that's uh, definitely helpful from a reporting perspective, which we'll show in a second. Uh, at the same time, as we can imagine, it's now moved into the open medium bucket here on the left-hand side, and we see here the status has been changed as well. And then really the final bit of value on, on this screen of this interface is the fact that if you notice here, it says who should receive emails about changes to this ticket. So really by default, you can have the following, or up to, I should say, four people involved with any updates that relate to this ticket. So, you know, as a default, we drop in the sales agent, we drop in the sales manager, because there's value in both of those people knowing that, you know, uh, 14 below the merchant that, that maybe they closed or worked with six months ago now has an issue, and we want to be aware of that, like we talked about earlier um, when we were looking at the PowerPoint. But you can also have the primary merchant contacts email in here, and maybe the person at that location that reached out to you, or the spouse of the merchant, or the general manager at the store, or whoever it might be. You can also have another email in here as well. And really, as there's uh, updates that relate to the ticket as it's open and even closed, uh, all these folks are being kept in the loop automatically. So again, you don't have to reach out to John Smith just to say, hey, we closed your ticket or resolved your issue. Um, I mean, by all means, you're welcome to, but there's a, a more automated path uh, to you know, free up some time from your team, and you know those emails will go out. You know they could be um, very detailed. They could be uh, you know a bit less detailed. Depends on how you want it. I mean your brand will definitely be on the email itself. So you have a lot of control there as well. And you know where it makes sense, you can also remove some folks in here if you didn't want certain people to be notified as there were updates. And then real quickly, finally, I mean you can send emails from this ticket interface. You can create tasks for yourself or follow up activities, log a call. So. There's really a lot going on here. And ultimately, yeah, you'll eventually close this, this ticket out. And then just to go back to 14 below, you know, just a final point here related to that is all of what we've just done and, and really everything that's ever been done relating to this merchant, that's all going to be uh, logged or, or be able to be logged and tracked by your team. So as you can see here, we've created a lot of tickets recently. But you'll be able to see, okay, what changed on this merchant's record? What were the details of that change itself? When did it happen? And who initiated it? So a lot of valuable information here because you can see, okay, well, maybe Philip and Amy and, I don't know, Susie uh, in our back office interacted with this merchant, and we also have a sales agent that did something on the record and sales manager. Um, so, again, a lot of value in having this, this sort of audit trail of everything that's ever occurred with this particular merchant. So I think from a customer service perspective, that should really talk to a lot of what's uh, achievable today. I think we want to round up uh, the call looking at the last item here, and that is really reporting. So as kind of the final of the five key things or, or key pieces of value that we, we really provide today out of the box with, with P2, um, you know, the final thing we want to look at is reporting, dashboards, uh, you know, what the capabilities are here. So realistically, there's probably a good 25 to 35 reports that we make available for our clients sort of out of the box with P2. Uh, again, a lot of them are merchant acquiring specific and things that we've built. Uh, by all means, you're able to go in there and customize those, tweak those, add, remove, you know, do what you want with them. Um, you know, reporting is, is definitely one of the, I would say, biggest points of value being on this platform, the salesforce.com platform. It's something that they do well. It's something that, you know, we here at POS Portal, through the P2 solution we built, we take advantage of all that. And really, as, as cliche as it may sound to say this, um, really the, the sky's the limit for, you know, what reports you can create and, you know, what you can do from a reporting or a dashboard perspective. So, you know, as long as you have data in a field somewhere within P2, you could technically run reports against that. So, you know, these reports are individually created here. There's also a path for them to be scheduled out. So you could have um, not only a, a report but a dashboard go out every morning, let's say, to your CEO as he's waking up at his house and drinking his coffee, and maybe he gets, a, I don't know, a dashboard or a pulse of the company uh, there on his mobile device. So you can see what's going on from a customer service perspective, what's going on from a sales perspective, um, you know, application related. So again, a lot that you can do there. Um, and what a dashboard is, real quick, I'll show you some examples here. Uh, really a dashboard is just a combination of up to nine different reports that you can have displayed. So we're going to show three dashboards today. So this first one is, again, what we call an application processing metrics dashboard. So we have a few reports here that we've uh, included in that. 
This one's always really valuable for folks to take a look at, this active applications by stage or application pipeline. And with any of these reports, you can click into them, you can drill down, you can make tweaks, changes. So in this report, we're able to see sort of a breakdown of, of everything out there in our pipeline or everything that we're working on and, and what stage it's in. We can also then see in this example, again, who the merchant is or the account and then the sales agent. So we could say, okay, I want to look at all the deals in the application stage and who are all the agents that are working with those merchants. So that's something that's achievable. Um, some other examples here, products sold year to date. So, you know, again, when you're able to track all these different deals and these products independently, there's a lot of value in seeing what's actually sold. Um, there's another example we'll show in a second of, of, you know, what are you projecting? So, you know, if we're saying a lot of deals are going to be related to merchant processing, what does that look like from a forecasting perspective? Daily application count. Um, you know, how fast are you guys processing apps, application declines, business hours before the app is claimed? We, we got a question this morning um, from, from you know, someone on the, the earlier webinar relating to the business hours and, and how that could be set up you know, from a, a tracking perspective. And the business hours are something that you guys would work with our team on um, during the implementation of P2 and, and define. So you know, obviously the weekend wouldn't count. So you know, if an app is submitted, let's say, Friday afternoon at 4.30 and you know, in the system you've designated that 5 p.m. is your end of business time, then you know, when Monday rolls around and that's going through the process, it's not going to be at, I don't know, 49 hours or however long it would be. It would be at just that single 30 minutes or, or an hour long. So that's something that you guys work on. It's simple to, to tweak that. Um, we'll show two more real quick here. So customer support metrics. So this is going to be looking at uh, these tickets that they have been created. And just some quick examples here. We can look at, you know, who is requesting support. So how does that break down by merchants or your agents or your own staff? Obviously, we have a lot of uh, examples or have a lot of merchants that have been uh, requesting support in our example. We can look at severity. So how do those break down by you know, the severity we've set or the temperature, closed tickets, uh, tickets open monthly, and then again, tracking the cycle time involved. So the average time to claim and close a ticket, that can be displayed there. So you guys can see if you're making improvements you know, month to month or, or you know, week to week, essentially, too. That's valuable information to have for your customer support folks. And then finally, uh, we'll just round up with one last dashboard here uh, for, for today's example relating to sales performance and your referral partners as well indirectly. So we can see things here, you know, referral partner performance. So what are the deals by month by partner? Um, what does that look like? Deals by month by agent. So again, we could click into a report like this and sort of see like a leaderboard um, or, or kind of where everything's at. And again, this could be visible to agents. It maybe it's just visible to your own internal team. It's up to you. But we can see a breakdown of that and you can the billing stage, the approval date. And these are all able to obviously, like I said earlier, to be customized. Here's the probable revenue by product that I mentioned. So we talked about that. And then just some other items, you know, reps with completed activities, deals closed, et cetera. So that should hopefully round up reporting and the dashboard capabilities. Again, there's a lot that's possible. Um, you know, this is something that a lot of our customers find a tremendous amount of value in because all the activity going through the system is great, but if you don't understand that um, and there's no, you know, key takeaway or um, metric or something that you're tracking to understand, you know, again, where else the gaps might be, then, um, you know, there's, there's not a whole lot of value in that. So that's what we sort of bring to the table uh, with that solution and these reports. I think with that all being said, um, you know, we talked about the five key items we wanted to, so lead management, sales automation, application processing, customer service, and reporting. We have about eight minutes here uh, in the hour. So what I want to do is open up the call for any questions. And before I do, just some recent feedback. Um, I think we have a few clients on the line today, but um, you know, for those that are new to POS Portal or P2, you know, these are just some recent, uh, you know, quotes and feedback that we've got from some clients, uh, you know, Century and SecureNet, Infantech, SilverEdge, uh, all relating to P2 specifically. So, yeah, all positive stuff. And with that said, I know I mentioned earlier in the call, if you had any questions, if you have any questions, uh, we're going to take those on at this time. So please type them into the chat or the questions box.